Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're continuing on our acoustic parlor style guitar kit from Solo Guitars, uh, available at Solo Music Gear. There's a link in the description if you want one. It's an affiliate link. Helps me out if you pick one up. We have a request that we've gotten a few times now on how to color a fretboard. And there are a couple different ways to do this. People always view these fretboards as like some kind of mystical thing that you can't really touch. That's not true. You can put a finish on them. You can put a tinted lacquer on them. You can enamel them. You can do pretty much whatever you want to the fretboard as long as you don't screw up the frets themselves. These frets are leveled and polished, so I could lacquer right over them right now and then just peel the lacquer off the frets because it won't stick. What I'm going to do instead, though, is I'm going to dye it because that is easier. And we're going to be using black because that seems classy and I want to. I don't even want to color this one that much, but I, like I said, I've gotten some requests. So I'm going to use a black dye. This one's Bellin, but if you check out Solo Music Gear, they have the Mohawk version. Bellin no longer exists. It's been subsumed back into Mohawk. So you can get it there. And then you can also get Odie's oil. And I'm using Odie's dark so that it'll darken over time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to oil this fretboard, or sorry, I'm going to dye this fretboard. Then I'm going to oil the fretboard and the rest of the neck. The neck's not glued in yet. Neck's not getting clamped except against the fretboard. No problem there. So dye, oil. Let's get to it. The first thing that I need to do here is clean up this fretboard. I don't tape my fretboards off when I do fretwork anymore. I used to, um, but I don't anymore. So I need to get a little bit of basically polish cleaned up off there uh, from polishing up the frets. And that may seem a little odd that I don't tape it when I polish my frets, but as you can see, it, it hasn't done me a whole lot of harm. So um, once I get that cleaned up with a razor blade, I just get all of that scraped off. I make sure that the the board is in, you know, clean, good condition, then I can go ahead and start dyeing. And this stuff is incredibly easy to use, this dye. Uh, it's literally just wipe on. The, the only problem is that I'm using a shop towel here, which is basically a more robust paper towel. And so if you're not careful with these, they can get torn up a little bit on the frets and stuff like that. And uh, they can leave a little bit of I guess fuzz a little bit of uh, detritus on there. So y you want to be careful about that, but it's not that difficult to manage. Uh, you can see that I'm kind of using the back end of this thing, the dry side to wipe off excess dye, and then I'm going in and continuing with it. And so wiping back and forth over the frets like that, that's when you can get uh, just a little bit of, you know, fuzz sitting there. Not a problem. Just wipe it off after. Um, so you can see there's some damage to this thing. I just move to a different area of it and uh, and continue. One thing I will say, if you don't want to have these kind of egregious black stains all over your hands, wear gloves. I think we probably all know that. I still don't do it for some reason, but I should. And uh, And this stuff is very difficult to get off of your hands and will stain them for a prolonged period. So that's... I won't belabor the point, but that's what I'll say about that. Wear some gloves. It's it's not difficult to put on a pair, and, uh, and it'll save you some trouble down the road. So let's kind of speed this up here. I used the guitar to stabilize the neck for dying for, for most of it. Um, now I've popped it out, as you can see, because I don't want to accidentally get some of this stain on the guitar. But I keep it in there for the most part because it just makes it a little easier to keep everything stable. It's uh, I don't have a neck rest at the shop. It's at my kind of home workstation. So that's my strategy. I'm going to pop it back in here and, uh, and do some cleanup work. So this stuff dries almost immediately and, uh, and it dies pretty much everything it touches, which means it also dies the binding. Not a problem. I'm going to just scrape it off using a razor blade like I do with most stuff that gets on bindings. What I will say here is I'm not being particularly careful about keeping a sharp edge on the corner of the binding because I like a rolled over edge on my fretboards. And uh, a lot of people who say that, you know, old guitars feel better or play better. One of the main reasons for that is a rolled edge on the edge of the fretboard. It's just more comfortable. So, um, Rather than doing what I do on a wooden fretboard, which usually involves more sandpaper and or a burnishing tool, for this, I just use the razor blade. And I kind of go in at a bit of an angle. I get all this dye cleaned up off of there, which is pretty easy. And while I'm at it, I roll the edge of the fretboard a little bit. Just take a little bit of that sharp edge off. 
I'm never going to be moving the string over there. It's never going to have any negative impact on my ability to fret this thing. Um, basically, it's all positive as far as I'm concerned. Some people may prefer a sharp edge on the fretboard. I'm not sure I've ever met anyone who has said that, but it's possible. Um, but I certainly don't. And so I do that on both sides. And again, I'm using the guitar itself almost like a, a neck stand here to stabilize this thing. This is sped up to 250% now. That At the beginning, it was real time. Anyway, so I use the guitar to stabilize the neck as I work. And then when I get down to the bottom, I'll just pull it out because I don't want to accidentally you know, run the corner of my razor blade into the top of the guitar that's now um, filled and ready to go. So I'm, I'm not going to avoid that damage by just pulling it out when I get to that stage. With the bottom of this fretboard, I have to be a little bit more careful. I don't want to... Um, don't want to put too much of an angle in there and I want to make sure of course that I'm not scraping any die off of the you know fretboard itself I don't want to scrape back to bare wood there without the die so it's just a matter of being cautious taking your time which sounds hilarious because this is at 250 percent speed but you know I'm being careful I'm using angles to avoid damaging anything so I'm holding my my razor blade at a bit of an angle and never cutting uh, it's always dragging. So you always drag the blade behind. You never slice. So now that that's had, honestly, not very long to dry, probably 20 minutes uh, cumulatively, maybe half an hour with the time I spent scraping, now that that's ready, I can go ahead with the oil because the dye dries incredibly fast. This is hard wax oil, uh, Odie's oil. You've probably seen me do a demo of it. If you haven't, well, I've done a whole video on this stuff. This is the dark, um, which, as I said before, just means over time it will perhaps darken up a little bit. It looks the same at the beginning, and I just want to make sure that, you know, nothing really lightens up because I've just gone through this effort to darken the fretboard. So I'm going to apply this to the entire neck, uh, headstock and everything. You will have seen just a second ago how little of this I put on here. It's, it's not a lot, all right? We're using very little product. Odie's oil is expensive, but it goes an incredibly long way. You don't need much of it at all. And so I put a tiny little bit on here. The biggest mistake people use make with this product is they use too much. Um, I'm, I'm barely, you know, barely creating a little coating on the surface. And I'm, I'm going to have to take off most of that after I'm going to have to take off the excess. Although, realistically, by the time this dries, I'm going to leave it for about half an hour, 45 minutes after I finish applying it. By the time it it finishes that that period of time there's very little i guess to take off which is good so i put this very little bit on here i'm going to reload my pad here in a second this is a non-abrasive pad so i'm not worried about you know hurting my frets or anything like that they're going to stay nicely polished and uh and i, I use kind of the the back of the pad there you saw to to take a little bit of excess off if there is any so the the frets are good don't have to worry about any of that. You certainly don't have to spend a lot of time trying to go between them unless you're using an actual abrasive pad, in which case they might need to be polished again. Um, these won't. A little bit of hard wax oil on them isn't going to change anything. It's not going to stick to them very well, so that's fine. I will just take that off of the frets when I take the excess off the rest of the fretboard, just simply by buffing it off of there. No problem there. Now, you can actually buff this with like a wool pad or something if you want to, it's absolutely not necessary as far as I'm concerned, but it is possible um, for somebody who's looking for slightly more of a shine. You can build this up in it, pretty much as many coats as you want to a shine if you want. It won't be a hard gloss, of course. Uh, it's not the right product for that, but it's very, very easy to use, and it doesn't take very much. And I really like the feel that it gives on a neck. I don't like a glossy neck. And I like the look that it gives on a fretboard and uh, the little bit of protection that it provides. So I apply that to the rest very simply, same method. This is all real time. Unfortunately, I'm shaking my camera a little bit somehow, but uh, this isn't sped up or anything. This is just how quickly this process goes. It's it's not difficult to work with. And uh, yeah, I, I like this product. I It's available through Solo Music Gear if anybody's looking for it. It's also available in a lot of hardware stores, a lot of places that sell like good quality tools will carry this as well. So you can find it. Well, I won't say anywhere, but wherever you need to, <laughs> kind of. So hold on a second here while I finish up this neck, and then we will jump ahead in time about 45 minutes, 
and you can see me remove the excess. Uh, and so the gloss, the little bit of shine that we had there, buffs right back to this beautiful satin look. And I'm just using kind of a rough cloth for this. This is a dishcloth because I happen to have one available, but what you're looking for is like a towel type thing. A rough cloth like this works perfectly. Um, not, you don't really want to use the same non-abrasive pad again. You can, but it's not ideal. And this isn't a situation where you want like a soft cotton cloth like you would use for polishing up clear coat for, for removing any excess polish or something like that from clear coat. That's not quite the same principle. Here you want something that's just a little rougher. Uh, I won't call it abrasive because it's not, but something a little rougher that, that really kind of buffs off the excess oil and gives you this nice satin look after. And, and yeah, that's what we're left with. I don't know about you guys, but I think that looks great. And I would say we've successfully darkened our fretboard. Um, doesn't necessarily look like it's ebony, but it looks good to me. It looks nice and dark, nice and uniform. Uh, still retains all that wood grain, which it doesn't need to. You could paint it if you want, but this is basically what was, was requested. Can you darken a fretboard and uh, or change the color? And the answer is simple. Yes, you can. And this is how I do it. All right, guys, there you have it. That is how I like to darken a fretboard. I think that looks really good now, actually. I wasn't entirely sure that I wanted to do that, but now I'm glad I did. So, yeah, we've got a nice dark fretboard. We've got our worn finish on the neck, like worn looking finish because of how much of the filler I took off in that area. We've got our beautifully grain filled body. And I think that's gonna look awesome. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And remember to subscribe if you haven't already so you can see how the rest of this series goes. Thanks again. Have a good one. See you next time.